Let me show you how to build the secondary hull of the USS Enterprise on Monster Hobbies. Let's build it! Hello everybody, my name is Trevor Selescu and I'm the owner of Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Build It. And we're building our Starship Enterprise kit from 1983. And this episode we're going to look at building the secondary hull, which is actually the main point of the ship, because it supports all the other components. So let's go down to that infamous purple paper on our desktop and figure out how to build the secondary hull. Welcome back to our bench. And we're going to open up our box in just a minute and pull the parts out that we're going to need to build the secondary hull. But before we do that, we are going to have to get some stuff to use as reinforcing. Because the side walls of the secondary hull are very weak, and if you squeeze them too much, they will actually split along the seam lines. So in order to stop that, I would like to introduce a new product. This is Evergreen Scale Models Sheet Styrene. Um, this particular one comes in... 0 0.010, 0 0.020, and 0 0.040 inches thick. It's an assortment pack. Uh, and what we would do is cut this into some strips and glue them along the edges of the seam lines, which I'm going to demonstrate while we do this video. So for now, let's go down and open up the box. And here we are again, right down on our hobby bench. Now let's open the box up and find out what pieces we're going to need for this build. So we have our decal sheet, but that's not included. Now, here's our instruction sheet, and we'll carefully open it up, and we're going to look at the pieces that we need. Oh, it makes a bit of noise. So right here, it looks like we need the right and left hand sides of the secondary hull, which would be this piece here, and this piece here. Then over here, it shows that we need the main deflector dish, the piece that goes behind it, the bottom of the secondary hull, and the shuttle bay doors. So let's find those pieces in our box. So there's the front of the secondary hull. There's the bottom of our secondary hull. There is the shuttle bay doors. Whoop! <laughs> Woohoo! And there is the dish. Ready to go. So we're just going to move our box lid to the side and we'll examine these pieces in a little more detail. Now that we've gathered up our main components, we're going to have to actually remove the part trees from them and clean them up a little. So we're just taking our clippers and clip this off. This is a uh, pretty basic if you've seen the saucer video, the primary hull video. But anyway. And there. Now the parts trees are out of the way, and we can begin by cleaning up some of these pieces. The tools we're going to need for this project are the sandpaper block, our hobby knife, and a file. And uh, this is just the cleanup, so it should be fairly straightforward. On these shuttle bay doors, you just want to take that uh, sandpaper and sand this edge of the thing, which is fairly simple and straightforward. Followed, of course, by the bottom. Just give that a little cross sand, make sure you get it nice and flat. And then use your knife with the adzing technique and just go around your edges here. So if you clean up these parts and get them nice, they will fit wonderfully inside your model. Then you want your front end cap, and now where this 
was clipped off. You've got to be fairly careful just to give this a little cross sanding to get this side nice and flat. Now, you don't really want to take your knife and adds right here right now because it will create a valley when this glues to there, which we don't really want to do. So instead, we'll just take the hobby knife and adds around this outer ring. And you gotta hold your knife in such a way that you're actually standing up in the adzing in this bit of a groove here. Or not a groove, but a step. Now I just noticed there's a dent right there. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. That is a uh, problem with the mold. Didn't get enough plastic in that area and it sunk down. So let's see if there's any others. No, I don't see any others. So you could use your putty right there and just put a bit across and then should be able to sand in there with your sandpaper. Might be a bit tricky though. It's up to you, of course. It's your choice. And then we've got our main deflector dish. Now, one step we're not going to do right now is to glue this into here because we need to paint this separately from the model in our painting stage. This whole model will be, of course, the Federation gray color, but the dish will be a copper. So in the meantime, now this is where it's a bit tricky, but hold your sandpaper to the contour of that dish and then cross sand very carefully because you don't want to make flat spots, but cross sand out that cutaway point on your dish. Okay, now I think it's got it down on this edge. Now we gotta carefully remove it off this edge. So again, working nice and flat along the edge of that there. Now the other thing is to spin your disc around the, the sandpaper like I'm doing here. Now that's got our main deflector dish nicely cleaned up. So we're going to move these parts out of the way for right now, because we want to concentrate on the primary or the secondary hull, top and bottom. Now, right along here are the marks where it got cut off the tree. So we want to be careful with these. We're just going to take our sandpaper and make this one edge flush and flat, just in case that point where we clipped it off made a little bump up along this side, because we want to perfect out our, our uh, gluing surface. And you also want to be careful of these little tabs that are sticking up that you don't sand them down. So you want to make sure that your paper, your sanding block doesn't go across them. And then we'll just go here too. Do a little angular cross hatching here. And then do this front surface. Anyway, okay. Now, the reason why I did that is so that this would actually, when we glue it together, become tighter in that area. And that's how we want that. We don't want uh, like a gap or anything like, like that, perhaps, right? Just nice and fresh into the area. Okay, that takes care of the bottom. Now you may be asking, what about the sides? Well, same thing. 
there's one of those bump ridges right there so we want to make sure we got this flat so I'm using the fine side here now there's something we have to be careful of and that's why I'm not going to sand this way yet now if you can see this uh, let's see you'll notice that you can barely see them but you'll notice that there are some windows here these are pressed or uh, not pressed but engraved into the ship and they're very close to that edge so in order to fix this we need to take our masking tape and go along here so taking a strip of our masking tape we're just going to lay it right over these windows which is very hard to do when you're trying to build a model around a tripod stand <laughs> but anyway okay just actually can break it off there and break it off here okay now our windows would be saved from that so we don't want to do any adzing because again we'll form a a groove that looks like that on a large scale into the plastic when these two pieces glue together so we really don't want that what we want is nice and crisp right and what we want to do next is we want to make sure that this gluing surface is going to be flush as well so we just take our fine sandpaper we'll do a little cross sanding here and down this edge And then we'll take our second piece and we'll do the same thing. Carefully sand along here. Make sure there's nothing in the way. And then we'll go along here and down here carefully. And then again we'll do a little on the front. And a bit on the front of this one. And now, get the front of our ship. That should sit nice and flush there. Which it does. And then, well, there's the other side. Nice and flush. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the that ridge or the flash or whatever you want to call it that we just created from sanding just to stay on there until we glue this now, together. You may be looking in here and you see this big injection mold bullet thing that's sitting there. What I found over the years that this doesn't really affect um, the position and height of this that much as it goes and relates to everything else but what you can do is just take your file and just knock off any little flat strange edges in here just a quick one right or you could use your number 16 hobby blade and just take off anything that might stick up on it and then I noticed something else I forgot you can adds along this because that's the actual lip of the shuttle bay hangar which would be your platform where your shuttlecraft land inside the ship remember to feel make sure there's no ridges going on and there you have that part I'll knock the dust off now that'll look nice okay now let's get some glue and glue in the the shuttle bay doors all right, so we're going to use our Citadel plastic glue to glue on these shuttle bay doors. And of course, you gotta take the cap off and move your straw up. And what I'll do is I'll put a bit on the bottom here. OK, 
Okay, so classic straw jam. So we'll just turn this over and we'll try her again. There, you see? The glue comes out. So it's kind of a good thing that little accident happened, eh? Okay, so I'm, I've got enough on the bottom here. And what we'll do is we're going to put it just down inside here. And then we want to move this around just ever so carefully until it gets a proper square angle in here of 90 degrees. And here's a protractor. Well, not a protractor, but a, a right angle. And that has pretty much got that nice and square. Now the next stage to this is to glue the cap on to the front of the ship. And again we're going to use our Citadel glue. And that would be this quadrant here. A little ribbon of glue right there. And then we'll put this like this. Carefully drop it into position. And now you're going to need to rotate the cap until these bits line up perfectly. We'll just check to make sure. And check to make sure. This one has a little bit of an issue there. So when it gets glued together and dried, we'll have to correct it with a hobby file. And I also noticed a little problem here. This actually, if you can see it, yeah, you can see that, that little gap there, that's because I accidentally noticed that I did that with the sandpaper on that point. So. This is the same thing you would get if you did your adzing right on that, that section there. So I'm going to have to use some filler there, but that's not a problem. I'm just making you aware that that's what it looks like when you actually have that kind of little mistake go on. Okay, now let's get looking at the top bits and how to reinforce along here to make it a lot tougher. So what we'll do before we actually go and glue that together is I'm going to dig out our thickest piece of sheet styrene, which should be this one. And we need our little ruler here. We're going to cut some strips with our hobby knife. So in order to do that, I'm just going to turn the blade upside down. And I'm just going to Drag it along the edge of our ruler. And that should make a groove right into this flat plastic. And then what you can actually do is... I should be able to fold this over. So there we have a strip of plastic. Just keep these scissors out. And you want to roll it in reverse so it goes nice and flat. And then what we want to do is take this piece of plastic and we're going to glue it inside just so a bit of it sticks up. And this will help our strength of the sides of the upper part of the secondary hull. So go ahead and cut a few of these strips and then we will glue them in. Now here I've cut out three strips of plastic and we're going to get take some of these and try to glue them in on that edge. Now remember we have the little bump sitting here so we're just going to cut a little piece of the plastic like that and that one will glue in between the front here and our little bump. 
So we're just going to put a bit inside here on our secondary hull. Okay, there's a bit of glue there. I'm just going to glue it a little above the height of that little retainer bump. So just about there. And then what we're basically doing is we're making a thing here that's like this. And we're going to put the strip all the way down to where it hits the shuttle bay doors. And we'll do the same on the other side. So I'm going to clip these, now that you got the concept, and glue them in. And there we have our little runners glued in there, our little strips of plastic. And that's how your ship should look at this point. And this will give enough reinforcement when this is glued on so that if you pick it up kind of like this, you won't crack that seam line. So I've grabbed a couple of these clips of ours. What we're going to do is we're going to take our glue and we're going to glue on one side of our connecting dorsal piece, or the neck. We'll glue down here along the neck and up here and around and along the top. A little squeak of glue there. And a squeak of glue here. And a squeak of glue there. Squeak, squeak. Then I'm going to glue a little, put a little glue in to the, these two little blade things here because that holds that single blade together. I'll just carefully put this here like this. And I'm going to grab these and clip one there and one on this side. And then we're going to do a little alignment here be able to align it around the pressure of those clips. Move this back and forth a little just to get it just so. Okay I just checked the alignment and it is looking pretty decent. So what I'm going to do is turn it over and I've got this sharpie pen here what we're going to do is we are just going to make a little marking right here, there, oh, I guess, and then about there. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our strips of styrene and we're going to cut them and glue them in. We're going to cut just behind that mark, so that would be actually right there. And then I'll use this side here. Draw that to that mark. So what I've done is I've left enough room there and there so that when we glue this piece in it's not going to be stuck on this bit of styrene. It's going to sort of be hard to judge if I got that in the right spot. But it's just a guesstimation. Then the other thing is we don't want to see like a strip hanging out here like this. Okay, so here we go. So we're going to cut this there. I'll put that there. And then we'll cut this here. I'm going to put this strip way off camera over here. Okay, so I'm going to do the long one. You really can choose which one you want to do first. So just get a little healthy helping of glue around there. Now if you if you ever want to build one of these and light it, 
then you need to not cover the neck opening like I'm doing because your wires would go up there into the saucer but I'm not lighting this one so it should be okay uh, make sure you glue your strips so that both it's covering both sides and we'll just put a little more glue along the back here uh, glue with the cross hatching <laughs> okay and then I'll drop this piece right there and try to squish it in making sure I got half of the strip on one side and half on the other and that should give us a good strong backbone right along that ridge right there underneath on the other side which will give us strength for uh, to stop it from cracking apart and then now keep in mind that this glue is still soft we haven't given this a 24 hour uh, rest treatment yet now we should be able just to glue this and let that roll over now the idea is just to move this around and move that up. So we're letting our glue be soft right now so that it can do a little flexing as we're putting it onto the top to the bottom. So now I think it's, I'm pretty confident that we'll be doing okay here. If I can just squeeze some more glue along along our uh, little ridges sticking up here. Gonna put a glue, glue carefully along our shuttle bay doors. And then bring the glue along here. And then over top in the front right there Ooh. then we will drop this down like that now be careful if you get any glue on your thumb or anything make sure you wipe it off so you're not sticking glue fingerprints into your model okay now we're just gonna pinch that over And make sure those are all nice don't worry if the glue squishes out on the sides just yet because we can always sand that down into shape this is looking good considering I'm reaching around a camera to do it now here it looks high high off our model edge so you can manipulate it around a bit Always remember that we can sand this into shape later using our cross hatching technique. Okay, if it's sticking out a little bit, I think maybe we could softly bend in the part we glued before. Let's just see if this doesn't correct something. Yep, yeah, that's what it needed which is a lot better than trying to file that big bit of it down. And now this side looks like I pushed it up. So again, this stuff can be done, but it's a little bit of fidgeting to get it to potentially work perfectly. And that is looking decent for now and then everything else we can correct in our sanding phase so we're going to let this glue dry and come back and finish up with the sanding here we are the next day we let our glue dry 24 hours and now it is feeling really solid um, usually if you don't glue the reinforcement pieces in here you can actually crack that seam line and here, I mean, I'm putting a lot of pressure on this, and it ain't moving. So that is a good sign. 
as Martha, Martha Stewart would say, it's a good thing. <laughs> so now we're going to do a little cross sanding and whatnot. But for this particular Enterprise kit, we want to save these windows that are along here. Here, let's see. Yeah, you kind of see them right there, these indentations. So I want to save those because um, I don't have any window decals or anything else like that for this kit. So I'm grabbing my nice thin tape here. Before we begin any sanding, I will just cover these over with the tape. See, there's one there. I don't see any more along this edge. So here we have the secondary hull with the windows covered over. Um, I forgot there was a little one here. It's a little circular porthole thing at the back. And then those two circle ones are gone up there. So there we go. So I think what we'll do is we're going to start simple. We'll sand down the top seam line along here before we try to conquer into there. So again, you want to find out which side feels a bit higher to you and initially sand in that direction because you're trying to get the lower lower side to match up to the higher side and vice versa. So we can use our cross sanding technique like in the saucer video or the primary hull video. And now because this is circular, you want to basically roll along here. You don't want to make a flat spot. So there's our one direction of the cross sanding. And here's the other. And eventually the two will even out. Now you can tell because here you'll see a shiny spot along there. I don't know if you can see it in the camera too much. Yeah, see that little shine right where my finger is? And the rest is kind of dull? That's where you're sanding. So when you get rid of that shiny spot, then your two pieces will match together. So we can... There. So now it looks scratched all the way across evenly and you don't see that shiny reflection. So that's how you know when you've gone far enough. And then there is your, your fine sandpaper on this side, just to give you that, that harmonizing smooth feel. So then we also want to cross sand up along the back of the, the dorsal or the neck as I like to call it. And use your fine sandpaper. And that took care of that pretty quick. Then we'll go across the top here. And this is this is an important area that you do want flat because this is going to go into the bottom of the saucer or the primary hull. Flying saucers. They are unbelievably important. <laughs> anyway. Now there is something, when we get into the fit and finish portion, I'm going to make a fit and finish video. I'm going to show you a few tricks on that. One of them involves this. So, at any rate. Okay, so we need to also do there, but as you can tell, our block can only get that far down. So what do we need instead? Well, you can do some adzing here. So it feels like this is the low side and the back side here is a little bit higher. So we want to go from the low 
over. So now see, you can get the knife right down to where the body and the neck meet. And there, that's getting rid of that really scratchy line. And we want to bring it from the low to the high. And you can also run a bit of loose sandpaper on your fingers down here too, just to smooth it out. And then you got this little ridge right there. And this is always a tricky spot. I always have trouble with it. But it all depends on how you glued your kit together too. Because this one seems to be fairly easy to get rid of. In fact, that feels perfect. Okay, now that the easy part... Oh, still got to do there, but... Anyway, now that the easy part is done... Oops. We do the next easy part, which is getting this level. And as you can see, this side here... Let's see. Yeah. That side there is shorter than that side there. So... You don't want to hit the bottom lip here, so you got to hold your sandpaper kind of like this. And carefully cross sand this for a little bit until the longer side is equal to the shorter side, right about there. So let's see. Yeah. See how that's even now? It's a pretty quick fix, isn't it? Uh, then, of course, we need to get in here. This gets tricky because that tape is right there. So the other thing you could do is grab your number 16 hobby knife. Just do your adzing right about there. Now you can cross ads. But you got to be careful in between tape because, again, you don't want to force a flat spot around here. see there if there's a flat spot or not. It looks like I kind of got a bit of one. So there we go, we just round that out. Okay, now that's looking good. Peel your tape off. I can see a little flat spot there. So very carefully, just going to round that out around those little window things. Being careful not to sand them off. Okay. There we go. I can go like this. Rolling the sandpaper around that curve. and around and then finally we got to get down here and this is the tricky part 
But again, now this is flat right here, and then it curves down here. So, I don't know how good this is going to be, because there's quite a jump in height. Let's cross sand this way. I think we're going to need filler. But we'll just bring it as close as we can. Cross sand this way. Do it again this way. Now this, this will sand down in preparation of the filler, so we don't need to use as much filler. Okay, so I think that's as far as I can actually bring that part, which doesn't look very far at all. And now back here, because we got the tape, we won't be able to get in there too well. So I'm just going to do some adzing with the number 16. Just to try to bring the top to the bottom. I'm peeling my tape up. Okay, yeah, it's still quite the height there. But this side should be generally easier. Let's just stop the other side for a minute. Now even this needs filler. Okay, I'll tell you what, I'm going to let you guys finish doing this, and I'm going to finish doing mine off camera, and then we'll compare. And there is our secondary hull with the tape removed. And there you go. Now there's still low spots here, and on this side, but I'm going to have to use the putty to get that proper. And I also noticed there are some sink marks on the fronts of these. But that is pretty easy to take care of with your sandpaper. Remember, keep make sure there's no sandpaper rubbing up against this side. But you should be able just to to again kind of cross sand these out by just turning this. And eventually they will get rid of the sink marks. There. And then to get rid of the scratches, just take your fine side over on here. And go up and down. There. Now when I was doing these, I had to actually peel the tape off because I couldn't get um, the files and knives around here to actually get that proper. So what I did was I pulled the tape off and I used my number 16 and I just adds the top higher spot until it started to hit the low spot. But I did lose one window up here. So when we get into the painting stage of this, I'm just going to paint a fake one on without any guideline and hope I get it the right length. <laughs> But perhaps you have done better, and uh, you don't need to paint yours. I mean, you don't need to paint a fake one on. You'll still have your indentations. Okay, now for those, we can just go... These are all straight, so you can just do this. <laughs> All right, 
so you guys can carry on at this point I think and just I'm gonna add some filler in here and in here and oh yeah I forgot about this one so there's two windows there so you just be careful but this one's straightforward cross sand it because you're trying to make the body meet with this end of the cap so then we just cross sand with the fine and now you may be wondering what's that hole for well that's a very very simple thing to figure out it's for your stand that's where that pin goes right there to there so there's your your ship sitting in the stand so far kind of like that and then you might wonder what are those holes for well of course looking at your instructions I'm showing you guys a little sneak preview but there is the warp engine right there and that warp engine will be covered in our next video so stay tuned well we hope you enjoyed that episode of building the secondary hull of the USS Enterprise and if you'd like to see the tools that we used please click here if you'd like to see us build the display stand click down here and if you'd like to see us build the primary hull click up here and please don't forget to subscribe to us right here so that we can make better videos and check us out at www.monster-hobbies.ca and we'll talk to you soon bye